everyone welcome to another video in this video we'll discuss eight important facts that you must know if you're a person dealing with a lot of cash cash transactions has traditionally become a significant part of the development of the Indian economy and is a persistent cause for the accumulation of black money today well the government is taking many steps to ensure to set various limits for these cash transactions and to combat the main evil of black money they've in fact put up restrictions ensuring the lower generation and circulation of black money and these restrictions in short aim towards achieving a cash less economy so in today's video we will not discuss why there is or why there is no black money rather i will stress upon certain provisions or rules which you must keep in your mind before you start making payments or receipts in cash because dealing in cash is not a sin, it's not a problem per se, but there are certain things to be kept in mind before doing so. And the first provision states that you must not make any payments more than 10,000 rupees in a particular day to a particular person in cash. Now this refers to all kinds of persons, be it a company or an individual. And what it says is that if you are availing any kind of service or buying any kind of things from a particular person, and for that, on a particular day, you are making a payment exceeding 10,000 rupees in cash. Then the entire amount of expenditure, in this case being 12,000 rupees, this will not be considered as your expenditure. Rather, it will be taken to be your income and you'll end up paying tax on the same. Well, this is not applicable to banks or banking companies or government companies. If you make payments to them exceeding 10,000 rupees in cash, the provisions are not applicable. And yes, otherwise, if you do make payments exceeding 10,000 rupees on a particular day to a particular person in cash, then as I said, 100% of the amount of payment made as expenditure, it will be disallowed. In other words, it will be treated to be your income and you'll end up paying tax on the same. Well, on similar lines, the second provision says that you must not make payments exceeding 10,000 rupees on a particular day in cash to buy a particular asset. So say you or your company, you plan to buy a machine and for that you are incurring 12,000 rupees. You plan to pay, pay this amount of money on a particular day in cash because the total payment exceeds 10,000 rupees in cash. The entire amount in this case will not be considered to be the cost of the machine. In other words, you will not be entitled to get the benefit of depreciation on this particular cost because the payment that you made as cost exceeded 10,000 rupees on a particular day. In short, you will not be able to get the tax break or enjoy the tax break on this particular expenditure. The third provision says that you must not accept loans or deposits more than 20,000 rupees on a particular day in cash. The provision also includes the fact that if on the day of accepting loan in cash, on that day, if the balance of the amount of loan plus an extra loan that you've taken together, if that exceeds 20,000 rupees, then yes, you'll be hit with the provisions of this section will become a problem. To understand this, let's take the help of a simple example. Say you are at the receiving end and you are basically availing a loan from your friend and that is 19,000 rupees on 1st April. Now this is not in cash. You've got the loan by check from your friend. Say 19 days later on 20th of April, you are getting an amount of 2000 rupees as loan again, but this time in cash. Now what happens is on 20th April, you have got the 2000 rupees in cash plus an outstanding balance that is liable to be repaid to your friend from whom you got the loan is 19,000 rupees. And because the total of this on that particular day when you made the, when you accepted the loan, since it exceeds 20,000 rupees, then it will become a problem. And what they say is that if you continue doing so, then 100% of the loan amount that you accepted crossing this particular limit, you will be charged a penalty and you have to pay the same to the income tax department. Well, this of course is not applicable if the loan is taken by government companies, government institutions and bank companies, the provision of the section is not applicable. Therefore, they form an exception. Well, the fourth provision is exactly on similar lines, but it is 
the ulta or the opposite of the third provision and what it says is that if you make repayments of the loans more than 20,000 rupees on a particular day in cash then you'll be hit with the provision it'll become a problem and this also includes the fact that if on the date of making the repayment the balance of the loan plus interest already in your account that you have to repay if together that exceeds 20,000 rupees then yes you'll be hit with the provisions of this section again to understand this in a more simplified manner let's take the help of an example Say you have taken or received a deposit of 90,000 rupees by check from your friend on a particular day. Few days later, you plan to repay that particular friend 3,000 rupees in cash. Now, what happens is, as on the date of repayment, 3,000 rupees is what you are paying, repaying in cash, plus you already have an existing of 19,000 rupees on that day of making the repayment because you not yet made the payment. And since this exceeds again 20,000 rupees, you will be hit with the provisions of this section will become a problem. And if you continue doing so, then again, you will be charged a penalty and you will have to pay the same to the income tax department, which will be equal to 100% of the amount of repayment, which is quite high. Same exceptions, if the deposits or loans are taken by government companies or banking companies, the provisions of this limit of 20,000 rupees in cash and all will not apply. Well, coming to a more lighter one, the fifth provision, it deals with medical benefits. Now, what is what happens is when you compute your total income, you get to deduct whatever expenditure you incurred on the medical side, be it a health insurance premium or a checkup expense and all that. You, can get, you get to deduct the same from your total income and then compute tax on the same. The limit for an individual below the age of 60 is 25,000 rupees. And in that 25,000 rupees, you have 5,000 rupees maximum, which if you've incurred as health checkup expenditure, you can claim as a deduction, reduce from your total expenditure, total income, and then pay tax on the same. So what the provision says is that, yes, this 5,000 rupees, even if you incur by cash, you pay cash for checkup cost, that particular thing is okay. But otherwise, any other medical expenditure, mainly being the health insurance premium that you pay to the health insurance company, if that is made in cash, then the entire amount you will not be allowed to take a deduction. Only this 5,000 rupees you will be able to take a deduction and reduce from your total income. In other words, as far as your medical benefits are concerned, you will be entitled to claim the benefit of deduction. If you make all payments other than for health checkup in a mode other than cash. Coming to donations to political parties, if you or your company is paying any rupee in cash to a political party, then this particular donation that you make cannot be treated as an expenditure. It will be disallowed rather and it will not be allowed as a deduction in computing your total income. The seventh one is a bit heavy and what it says is that if you receive an amount more than 2 lakh rupees in cash from a in aggregate from a person in a single day, B in respect of a single transaction or C in respect of a single event from a particular person and in all these three cases if, if the amount exceeds 2 lakh rupees in cash then yes you'll be hit with the provision and it'll become a problem. To understand these three transactions let's take the case of examples. Say you are the vendor and you're raising an invoice on 15th April okay and that is for 160,000 rupees on the next day you are raising an invoice number 2 and that is for 124,000 rupees so total becomes 285 now your customer says that look I'll make the entire payment in cash of 285 on a particular day mind you if you do if you allow your customer to do that and you, if you receive that amount of money in cash then the entire amount since the aggregate exceeds 2 lakh rupees you will have to you'll be liable to pay a penalty of the amount of money that you receive in cash it'll become a problem on similar lines let's take the case of another example say you are a wedding company and for the wedding of your customer you are raising an invoice of 7 lakh 50 thousand rupees on him now your customer being a smart guy tells you that look i will make payment to you in cash over 10 installments of 75 thousand rupees each now once he does that and if you're since you're receiving the uh, the money 
you will be again hit by the provisions of this section because though a single installment is less than 2 lakh rupees in cash because it pertains to a single event being the wedding of your customer the total receipt in this case exceeds 2 lakh rupees in cash and therefore the provisions of this section will apply and if you continue receiving the same then the income tax department can charge a hefty penalty on you and that is equal to 100% of the amount received from your customer but again there are exceptions if the amount received more than 2 lakh in cash by government companies or bank companies there is no problem the 100% penalty will not apply and finally there are cases where, where wherein you deposit or withdraw high value uh, in terms of you deposit high value uh, cash transactions or you withdraw uh, in cash exceeding a certain amount of money from the bank then the bank is liable to report in a particular form called significant financial transactions or SFT form basically reporting the high value transactions from your side what are these high value transactions let's take a look in the first case let's say you have a current account with the bank and you're bringing in money and you're putting in 50 lakhs into your current account more than 50 lakh rupees or there's a case where you're withdrawing 50 lakh rupees from your current account in the bank in both the cases your bank will report this transaction to the government and it will be available in the public domain say you are holding a savings account with your bank and you want to deposit 10 lakhs or more in cash in that savings account then your bank is liable to report the same it will be available in public domain say you want to open an FD and you want to bring in cash of 10 lakhs or more into that FD and deposit into the bank again your bank will be liable to report the same it will be available in public domain say now you have a huge credit card bill and you want to pay or make the payment or clear your credit card use by cash for an amount exceeding 1 lakh rupees or totally if it exceeds 10 lakh rupees even if it's non-cash and if you're making that payment to the bank then the bank is liable to report this credit card settlement to the government and therefore these, trans these settlement transactions of yours will be available in the public domain so all these ways if it is for a way for you to convert the cash into white money and all that you will be hit with the reporting by the bank wherein the information or the, or the, the details of transactions that you transacted with the bank will be available in the public domain. Well, I hope I was able to make things clear through this particular video. If you like the video, please do show support to us by hitting the like button. If you want more videos like these on a regular basis by way of notifications, you could also think of hitting on the subscribe button. Till then, I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care and thank you.